Listen, as a former Christian and a pastor's daughter turned spiritual consultant and religious deconstruction advocate, I am not here to challenge the beliefs of anybody. I'm simply here to tell y'all why the shit never made sense to me. I could never understand how we spent so much time in church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, service after service, dissecting and condemning our egos while completely ignoring God's. Hear me out. God is supposed to be a perfect being. What would be the point in a perfect being creating imperfection? Because a perfect being is not going to create imperfection on accident, otherwise they are not perfect. Meaning they had to create as a perfect being imperfection on purpose. And some of the scholars I've had this conversation with have said maybe God wanted to study imperfection. The fuck would God need to study imperfection for if he's perfect and all-knowing? If you were all-knowing, you would know what imperfection is without ever having to create it. You wouldn't even need to experience it, which leads us down the same pathway of how did he create a whole bunch of angels and not know that they were going to rebel against him in his own house he did and then he continued to create them anyways waited until they rebelled cast his enemy down into the same place he was going to put his new creation did he want us to have a fighting chance or not if that wasn't bad enough then he commanded and demanded that creation be subservient to him you're all powerful <laughs> what do you need me to do for you I'm giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the worship to make you feel good because you have an ego. You're around here telling people don't be envious of one another, but I'm a jealous God. Sir, <laughs> why would you even give consciousness the possibility of being able to conjure up somebody else to worship if you ain't want no opposition? You created your own opponents in your map. No, 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 no. Hey, Shalom Saints, all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and the double honors unto the elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone. Okay, now, uh, the state that this earth is in right now, and with how much of a mind fuck this world is, this woman asks questions that many of us had before we came into the truth, and she asks questions that may cross our mind even, uh, even now, and you know, questions that new listeners may ask and i really really want you brothers to understand that these are extremely rational questions okay no need to get defensive or offended yet rather be a, be uh be ready to give an answer now the first question was a really great one and she asked why would an imperfect being create imperfect so she asked why would a perfect being create imperfection you know at least take this time to glorify our heavenly father man this is why i love you how about shim shy the holy spirit and the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of you how about shim shy and let us glory that we know him and rejoice you know and hey may you how willing our names be written in heaven so let's look at how you hand the handle of this situation in numbers chapter 21 and get an answer to her question This is going to be the book of Numbers, chapter 21, and I'll begin at verse 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses, wherefore have ye brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And Yahweh sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against Yahweh and against thee. Pray unto Yahweh that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. So he wasn't literally crafting a living fiery serpent, but he's making a... Uh, he getting the element of brass and forming it to a statue that looks just like those serpents. So the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bidden, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole. And it's where you get the medical uh, symbol from today. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now, something interesting happened here. God chooses 
to send serpents, which is symbolic and a callback to the garden. Then Israel, the people of Israel, tell Moses to pray God take away the evil snakes. The snakes are hurting people. They're bad. Ask God to take them away. Pretty simple logic, right? But to resolve the issue, Yahweh gives Moses the blueprint to build a brass serpent, which symbolizes Yahweh Shai. A brass serpent that heals any Israelite afflicted by the serpent. Okay, so our God is a God of power. Second Chronicles 20 and 6. And we are his sons, whom he called gods. So what does that tell you? The message of this record that's probably here in Numbers 21. Okay, the record of the fiery serpents and the brass serpent is that it is more powerful to learn to contend with and overcome evil versus never knowing or dealing with it at all. Our father, Yahweh, is bringing us into godhood. See, she don't understand what the Bible is and she don't understand Israel, ancient Judean beliefs. So she's confused. But our father, Yahweh, is bringing us into godhood. And the spirit has come to us for the renewing of our minds. We're being made more than conquerors, remember? So why did Yahweh create imperfection and evil? So his vessel of mercy, his sons, can be glorified in the name, faith, and strength of God Yahweh to defeat and save from those things. Even if the whole earth becomes corrupt as it is right now. So that also answers her second statement. And from here I want to hop to the book of Susanna. Chapter 1. Okay, because uh, that also answers her second statement. That God wanted to study in perfection. No, that's not what happened. Susanna chapter 1, verse 42. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O everlasting power that knowest the secrets and knowest all things before they be. So God, Yahweh already knows the cause, effect, side effects, the complex formulas, everything Esau discovers. The reason why Esau can discover it is because it was already there. Our father created these things and understands them on a level this world and this little peon, disrespectful as black woman, they can't comprehend. You see, he knows the function of every organ inside every organism, the secrets to this life. He knows it all. Okay, this this life is us being born into a certain predicament and we find out the rest as we go. Yet, Yahweh already knows the beginning, middle and end. So God understands a bit more than Christianity would lead you to believe. Now, her other question, why does God need us to praise him and stroke his ego? Okay, and let me answer this. We don't serve God to help him with anything. She was like, why he need our help? We, the Lord don't need our help. You ain't read the Bible, man? Okay, uh, we serve him on the earth he created with the bodies he crafted for us. So that he does not send one of his other creations to destroy us for disobeying the creator and his rules. Now, when we inspect these rules, we find that these commandments are the recipe for health and peace on the earth and for you. The book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein. Ye shall find rest for your soul. Look, this says, Thus saith the Howl. He said, Do this so you will find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. And that's the problem with Israel. They walk out to vanity. And you do things. It tells you in the book of Jeremiah, your own backsliding is going to correct you. All right, she made this video. She's scoffing and all this. But that's, that's for your own correction, man. Now you look ridiculous. You see, you find yourself. Well, let me select you. Let me uh let me stay on point, man. Verse Jeremiah 6 16. But they said, We will not walk therein. And this was called the good way to find rest. See, it's good to do no adultery and to actually rid adulterers out of your society. 
it's a great way to keep hatred, murders, strife, evil, and a whole bunch of unwanted, despised children from walking around your community. And we all know how those children end up. I was almost one of them. So it's good for a man to use the life God gave him to serve Yahweh and not for man to serve himself. If you serve yourself and praise yourself on the earth and think that you're this big, great guy and you're magnifying your own name and not the father Yahweh, why the hell would he allow you to keep living in pleasure in his creation? You ain't thank the Lord for health. You ain't thank the Lord for food. You ain't thank, thank him for that sexy Brazilian woman you met once. Would you let your kids come up in your house and use all your shit and never show appreciation? Take it a step further. They begin to ignore you and act like you don't exist. Then the other child is scoffing at you. You'll be like, nigga, get the fuck out of here. You take your little dusty bussy. You know, you you will tell him to get his ungrateful ass out of here. The book of Genesis, chapter 4 and verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And speaking to Cain, but look, uh, right, if you do well, if you do righteously, will not Yahweh accept you? Yet, if you don't live according to his commandments, that means you are living in a corrupted manner. You have this, uh, this lust to lie, you want to lie, and those demons know that, and they creep into you. You want to steal, you want to be greedy, you want to be a tyrant, you want to be better than somebody, you want to exalt yourself. Well, if God is good, and lets you keep doing that, he's not good no more. So, yes, our Father does punish the wicked as an example for the righteous who behold it. And it's going to be, uh, what does that say, Psalm, matter of fact, I got to go to it, but hey, Psalm 91 and 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. Okay, so from here, let's hop to the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 30 and verse 11. She so had to keep in mind, like she was talking about why did God cast down the angel, why did he get mad about the angels and then cast them down? She she not understanding that uh those fallen angels were just the saints who chose to be sinners, man. Like our people are doing right now. Our people are saints, but they choose to be sinners. You falling from your perfect state. You see? And matter of fact, I'm going I'm to upload a video I did, or a camp we did, like last year on that. I'm going to upload that, re-upload. It goes into those the giants and the prophets and the Nephilim and our fathers. So let's read this in Deuteronomy 30, verse 11. For this commandment, which I command thee this day, is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have said before thee this day, life and good, death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love Yahweh thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live. It don't say that he mayest live, that thou mayest live, and multiply. And then when you multiply, you teach your children the laws, statutes, and commandments. They live in peace and perfection as well, and they multiply. So that's the way it's supposed to happen. But you niggas like to steal. You niggas got sticky fingers. So it says, And Yahweh thy God shall bless thee in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. Okay, so it's not so God can feel good about himself and stroke his ego as a man, which is a wicked notion to even, uh, well, you know, that that's something an unlearned person will say. You know, uh, it can't help it. It's retarded. You know, that, that's something that retarded, retarded people don't know what they're saying, man. They just, they make them noises. 
even if they saying words, they don't know what them words mean. They just making noises, you know. Judith 8 and 16. Do not bind the counsels of Yahweh our God, for God is not as men. Okay, the Lord don't have no fucking ego. <laughs> He's not wavering. That little bullshit ego that we feel sometimes, and the ego that, that these whores feel all the time, that pride. The Lord Yahweh is not small enough to have an ego. Okay, most people develop an ego because they're insecure about something in their life and or they're pessimistic about their own inevitable mortality. All right, and the Heavenly Father is an author. As an author of your story, certain things will anger you and change the emotion of you yourself if you're a good storyteller. But you can even, yeah, you can even mess with your own emotions if you're good enough at it. But as a writer crafting a story, ego don't even cross your mind. Those characters, what's the, what, what, well, those are your characters. Everything go to your will. Everything's happening just the way that you want it to. You know what I mean? So, the last thing that that woman that asked in a very backbiting manner, just like in the wilderness, was, why does God get angry at people for being bad when he makes them bad? Great question. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 7 and verse 11. 7 11. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. So God is angry at wicked people. Yes. Did God make these people wicked? The book of Proverbs 16 and verse 4. The Lord Yahweh hath made all things for himself. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. So, yes, God did create them. So why does he find fault in them, right? Well, you got to remember, the elect of Jacob are the main characters. All right. The book of Hosea chapter 11 and verse 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. So the Lord is dealing with us as a father does with his sons, Israel, Yasharala, he prince power. And that's why he's angry at the wicked, so we know what behaviors to hate. The book of Psalms, chapter 139. Let me scroll, you know, it's a long little book, you know. In verse 21, Psalms 139, 21. Do not I hate them, O Yahweh, that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee. Now, why did David think like that? Because he learned it from somebody. He learned it from somewhere, man. He learned this from God. And what does it say in verse 22? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies, just like God, Yahweh. So from here, let's hot. Let me scroll again. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, like this woman, if she don't repent. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. Yahweh will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. And that's the person who that woman learned that philosophy from. This talking about the so-called white man. So, yeah, right. So that's the reason God hates wicked people even though he created them so that israel knows to hate wickedness but the heavenly father is merciful is merciful to all people so you heathen nations were gifted your own kingdoms and rulership for a certain time as a participation award but now your time done all right all praise to yahweh bashem yahweh shai shalom